much of who we are is related to genetics and, and, and how much is related to the environment that we live in? Well, obviously genetics play a role in, in who we are. I mean, that's right. well, well documented um, that our genes play a role. But what's happened is over the last you know, 20 or 30 years is that almost a belief system has been established that everything about who we are is genetic in terms of whether we're sick or whether we're well. And so that has created a huge um, behavioral shift in how people live their life because we're just taught that, well, hey, this is how it's going to be anyway, right? I'm predisposed to this illness or that disease and people lose their power. We become um, slaves to our genes in a sense. So you, you, just, ask, you use that as an excuse. It's almost like, well, you know, I have this because my dad had it. That's right. And yeah, you you, like, you give that. yourself the excuse, right? Well, and you see how it's even, um, how it gets... Um, led into our culture in terms of uh, our healthcare system. I mean, you have on your sheets, right? You have medical history of this, family history of this, 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 and this. Well, so my father had diabetes, my grandfather had diabetes, so I'm going to have diabetes too. Well, your grandfather ate terrible, your dad eats terrible, and you eat terrible. So yes, you are going to have diabetes, but it's not genetic. So can you actually intervene and override genetics in most cases? Well, let's take a couple steps back. If you think about this, you ever wondered why two genetic, genetically identical twins, one could be sick all the time and the other one's well? They're yeah. genetically identi identical. Right. So clearly it's not genes. I mean, we can look at all different experiments that have been done, Cheryl. They've taken genetically identical cells and put them into two separate Petri dishes, okay? And basically you can change the environment in the Petri dish and you can make the cells sick. And the other cell can have a totally different environment, and the cell will be well and healthy. So clearly, it's not genetics. They're gen genetically identical, yet one has a different environment, and so it's expressing the interaction with that environment. The only way to change that cell back to being healthy is to change the environment. So would you say genetics really don't play much of a role at well, all? Well, genetics are like this. They're like a blueprint, right? The, and and the genetically, you and I and a tomato, very little Little, little little difference. Yeah, there were, there's very little difference between people genetically. We very, you know, as some people say it's less than 1%, some say less than 0.5%. Really? So there's enough for us to look different, but it's how our genes are, or I shouldn't say, it's how our body, uh, how we express our genes, right? So our genes are that blueprint, but how is that blueprint going to be read? And how it's read is based on the environment. It's based basically on how we eat on our exercise, on our stress levels, on, our, uh, on how well our nervous system functions, right? It, it's all about the environment. So basically, if you take those cells and then they're in that sick environment, Cheryl, do you think if I added a toxic chemical or a drug that I could make those cells healthy again? No. It's impossible. You can't do you it. Can't. You might be able to slow down the cells from dying, Right. Which is exactly what pharmaceuticals do. But you cannot, and people have to understand this, you can never get those cells well again. The only way to do it is to change the environment change the cells the environment. are in. That's right. So even if somebody is undergoing medical care and some kind of intervention in terms of a surgery or a drug, that body will never get well again, ever, until you change the environment. It's absolutely impossible. Now, you can put a drug or surgery in and slow something down. You can change a symptomatic output, and people might assume or think they're well, but the reality is you can never, ever be well. Your cells can never be well until you change your environment. That means do what? Eat by design. Eat by design. Move live by design. Move by design. Think by design. And maintain a clear neurological connection because your nervous system, as we talk about all the time, it's the system that integrates everything that's going on around you. So if you have a stressful environment and you're subluxated, you're, you're almost distorting the information that's traveling into your body. And so your cells are getting distorted, toxic information. How do you think your cells are going to express those genes? Healthy or sick? Sick. sick I think, I think the, one of the concerns that probably many people have is how do I know what to change in my environment? Because you think, okay, yes, right. I have, um, for example, allergies. Mm -hmm. That was something that I used to think was genetic and that I got mm -hmm. from my dad because he had allergies. That's right. Now I realize that's not the case because I don't have them anymore. My dad <laughs> right. still does. <laughs> that's right. And you still have, so, the, same, you still have the same I, genes. And I still have the same that's genes. Right. The only thing that's changed is my environment. That's right. So how do we know what it is? Like with allergies, it's obvious. You can, you can take a look at what, what the triggers are and figure sure. out what it is that, that's making you like this and, and, and change your immune system. Right. How do people know 
here's here's the game, right? Is is the way that we work in our in um, our medical culture is we label everything, all these different states of breakdown as sickness and disease, and then we try and say, what should I do for that and this and this disease and so on. I want to reverse that thinking, and what I want to do is get people to start thinking about what are the baselines that every human being needs. Forget about what your label is or lack of label. Forget about you know what your specific environment is. Why don't we start with the basic baseline things that every human being needs? Does every human being need movement? Yes, they do. There's a certain requirement that we need in terms of movement every day. Does every human being need a certain um, component of nutrients? Yes, and it doesn't vary that much between you and I. Does every human being need a clear nervous system? Yes. Sleep, water. So why don't we just start with those and change our environment that way? Because environment is not just the world around us, but it's also our internal environment. So it's looking at the bigger picture as opposed to micromanaging, Exactly. Right? Forget about you know the, the basic, oh, I have this symptom or that, or my kids don't have any symptoms. Get everybody living life by design. Let's start with the baselines and go from there. Well, I, I, I started seeing relief from my allergies when I started going to see a, a chiropractor. Mm-hmm. And what happened was I didn't change anything else. I, I didn't, you know, remove grass, pollen or any of those right. things from my life because you really can't. I mean, how right. do you? You can't. That's right. All I did that was different was change my Environment. Environment. That's right. You changed in the, the way sense that, that I, I was now seeking chiropractic care. That's right. And so the way that worked is you changed the input output system into your environment. So the cool part about chiropractic is it doesn't try and change the external environment. It tries to allow you to handle your environment better. So you express normal, healthy um, systems, and your genes express themselves in a healthy, designed way versus in a sick way. 